is Colin Giles. I live at a little community called Many Peaks, which is ahead of the Boyne catchment. And uh, on the Australia Day this year, we'd have to go down as one of the best, or the worst, I should say, as far as floods, because I've been talking to a heap of old people in the valley, and they've never seen anything like it in such a short space of time. Myself, uh, was stranded there for quite a while. Um, where the rain was all good in the first up, but after a space of time, it, everyone was saying enough's enough. And then, and it, then we could all see there was a problem coming. And Australia Day was when it all culminated on Australia Day. Okay, so when was that moment that you realised that oh, this is this is going to be quite bad? Australia Day, because we had a torrential downpour that morning. Right. And um, it was getting to the stage where we could start seeing it coming up towards the house and um, then it was starting to get the worrying stage then. Do you think, what, what makes what makes a valley person a valley person and do you consider yourself a Many Peaks resident or a valley person and how, how does the community work? Well, myself personally, I consider myself a Many Peaks person. I've been there 30 years and I love it because of the beauty of the place. It's an old gold mining town which started at the turn of the last century. And um, yeah, I would consider myself Many Peaks first, Boyd Valley second. Okay. Personally, I couldn't get out to see what was going on outside of Many Peaks because we were stranded. Because there's a lot of creek crossing between me and everybody else. So it was quite a while before I could actually get out. But I think Frank McKee himself personally tried to do the communicating side of things, which ran into a big problem because we had no phone, which got washed out of the creek. For two months, we pretty well lost our phone service. And, um, and at the moment, there's a big push on to get a mobile service for that reason. And myself personally, I went and uh, got myself a satellite phone for emergency purposes because if anybody got crook, we were in a fair bit of strife, I thought. Mm. And do you think events like this most recent flood brings the community together or fractures it? Well, I hope a lot of people learn a lot from it. Like, don't be too, don't be too complacent, you know? Like, Australia is a, is a um, country, I think, of feast or famine. It's either dry, and then when it does crack like it did last year, it all happens. And there's not much warning, you've got to be prepared for it, you know? But I think, I'd like to think it brought them all closer together and work as a teamwork in preparation for it when it does come through thick or thin. Oh, I think it'll, it'll stick in their memories, but we've all got to move on, I think, and get on with life because what else can we do? And um, just get back to normal and, and hopefully uh, a one like that is a once in a hundred event, hundred year event. And then um, they're, still, they're still doing the roads, etc., etc. but people personally, I think they're sort of getting back on track. I know a couple of people up there at Bullion that I used to keep in contact by phone from many peaks, because I can see the water coming down first, it runs straight past their place, etc. And, and they ran into a bit of strife. And then I made one last phone call to them on the Australia Day and told them, I said, you better be prepared for the worst, and it happened. And they copped it and they got a bit of devastation there in their house there, but and that's the last I heard of it. I didn't know what was going on because of, the, because of that lack of communication side of things. Yeah, well, it was ex-tropical sign uh, cyclone Oswald, I think it was. It came down. No one thought anything of it. it, it we cough started raining. Oh, I forget what day it was. A couple of days, three, four days there. Started bucketing into it, and then um, it's all good for a start. And then it kind of got off Gladstone there and sat off there for a while, picking up moisture off the sea. And then it then it came inland, and that's when all the problems started. Australia Day, like I said, was the worst. I work at a uh, a cattle property called Cedarvale at the base of the Krumit Range. And when I, we could finally get out there to fix up flood fences, there was no such thing as a road. We had to go around the hills and all that just to get into the, into the property. And they were communicating via uh, Facebook because of that satellite thing to Frank McKee once again. And he was communicating to me by two way when it was when we could get out there and do something about it along with everybody else. They had the same problems. But the creeks, there's a 
people don't realise there's a heap of tributaries here in the valley. I live on a little one called Deception, and on past me on the Monto Road, there's quite a few more. They all end up in the Boyd River. And where I work at Cedar Vale, there's a big creek out there called the Six Mile Creek, plus a few tributaries. That all ends up in the Boyd River. And that's why there's so much devastation down the line, because they had the sheer volume of water. I wasn't too bad, I got away with it. I still had uh, a bit of room to spare before the water got into me, because I think because I'm a bit higher up the catchment, myself personally. Mm -hmm.